Hi, and welcome back to Lama Speaks Sketchbook. Today, I have something really exciting. I'm going to teach you three Zentangle patterns, and then I'm going to actually speed up the video, and I'm going to show you how to put those patterns into a, a Zentangle piece of art. So our first pattern is going to be pillow. The second one is going to be tail. And then the third one is needle. So stay tuned. So we are going to draw three designs. The first one that we're going to draw is going to be called pillow. So let's get started. What we do first is we are going to draw diamonds. We're going to draw four diamonds. All right, perfect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw lines that have an arch to them. Basically, we're going to connect one diamond to the next diamond and out to the edge. And do that again on the bottom row. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to go from top to bottom. On the left side, we're going to change the way that we do our arc lines. This time, we're going to arc to the outside. As you can see, we already have some shape going on. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to color in our trying, or excuse me, our diamond. And now for our last one. So right now, our pattern is actually done. But I'm going to show you how to shade. I'm just going to go ahead and take my pencil. And what I like to do is I like to shade along the sides of the pattern itself. I know it just kind of looks like a line at the moment, but we're actually going to get out our blending stuff. So 
and we'll be able to blend this pencil. Perfect. We'll go and take our blending pump. If you need to go back over because you feel that maybe it's too light, you can definitely do that. And then blend it again. Perfect. It looks really neat when you have a large area with the pattern pillow. So our next pattern that we're going to learn is we're going to do a pattern that's called tails. The way that tails works is there is a line on the bottom that goes straight across. Actually, let me get the black one. There we go. Right across. And then we're going to make an arch. Now we're going to draw a triangle. It goes from one corner up to the top. We are going to do three circles. One, two, three. And then all we do is be color. We're also going to color the top of that triangle as well. Notice I wasn't really too worried about how straight my lines were on that because I knew that I could easily fix it just by filling it in. Remember, there are no mistakes in Zentangle. So if you do happen to make a mistake, then that's okay. Just find a way to fix it. Now for this pattern, you do fill this in. So I kind of already knew I was going to do that.
All right, just make sure that you make this as filled in as possible. I like this angle because it can be used as a border or you can fill a grid with it. It's really versatile. All right. Now, to shade this, because we're not even done with the shading yet. To shade this, there's a couple different things you can do. So we have our circles, and we can definitely go behind the circles. And then blend. Just to give it a little bit of depth. Now, what I like to do, if I am going to kind of set that piece like that, then I usually like to come back in with my micron pen and make it darker. Just going to put some lines on the outside to kind of make it look as though it's a little more 3D. I'm going to shade the outside of my arch as well so it looks as though the arch is actually on top of the paper itself. This definitely adds to the illusion. I'm going to blend it with our blending stuff. See, isn't that cool? All right, now for our next pattern, what we're going to do is we have two patterns that can work really well as like a filler or for, oh, and I forgot to write down the name of this one. I apologize. This one's name is Kale. The first one reminds me of like a quilt or a, a pillow that goes on your couch. This one's tail. And the last one that I have is actually called needles. This last one is good if you want to separate your tangle, your tangle pattern, and you actually want to show lines. So this one really took a few different tangles and put them all together. So, to do this one, first we're going to make two commas. Just like that. We're going to draw a great big circle in the middle. Now, we're going to draw a line connecting to the circle. Let's add a couple lines here. I'm going to draw a circle in like this. Put it on the other side. And one more. Now we're actually going to fill in this half circle right here. So 
So as you can see, it makes it look as though this piece of thread, if you will, is going into this hole. I think I'm actually make these a little more circular. There you go. Some other variations of this particular pattern that I want to show you because we'll probably use it in in the tangle that you're going to see in a moment. You can have part of your thread. This is one piece of thread. So if you wanted, you could even have we can make almost we can make almost um, two pieces of thread overlapping it, almost as though it was actually sewn. Because that's actually what my inspiration was is that this was actually the one that sewed this together. You could still have your button, but I thought that'd be a really nice idea. So you're going to probably see something like that. So let's go ahead and let's put some shadowing. So for our shadow, for our needle that has the button on the left, you definitely want to make sure you have some shadowing at the base of each of the pieces of thread. It's okay if it looks weird because we're going to go ahead and blend it. I would also put some shadowing along the base of the button. And then along the line. That way it looks as though it's standing on top of your surface. All right, let's go ahead and blend. And just blend until you're happy with it. All right, and there we have it. That is needles. If we wanted to go ahead and add shadowing for the variation to that, we could do that very easily. First, we definitely want to have some shadowing. And the darkest of our shadowing here where 
the stitch happen. And then you can also go right over your line. Just like that. And we're going to do a little more blending for that. Perfect. So that, that is our three patterns. Pillows, tails, and needles. So I hope that you found this somewhat easy. Now I'm going to go and show you a time lapse where I basically use three, these three patterns into a completed tangle. Here we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and watching the different tangles and how to do them and then put them all together to create one drawing.
If you'd like to see more drawing and how to do more Zen Tangle patterns, then go ahead and check out the other videos on this channel. If you think that someone else may enjoy this video, go ahead and share it with the buttons on the bottom. If you liked it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified when the next video comes out, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So for now, and as always, stay creative. Bye, guys.